In this video, I will present a paper called Generalized Optimal Subpattern Assignment Metric, written by Abu Sajan Rahmatullah, Angel Garcia Fernandez, and myself, Leonard Svensson. The paper recently received the Best Paper Award at the Fusion Conference, and I hope that you'll find it interesting. The Generalized Optimal Subpattern Assignment Metric, or GOSPA for short, is a metric on sets. That is, GOSPA measures distances between sets of vectors. Such metrics are important in order to evaluate the performance of, for instance, a multi-target tracking algorithm. Currently, the most important and commonly used metric to evaluate tracking performance is OSPA, and the generalized OSPA, or GOSPA, can be viewed as a new alternative to using OSPA. For those who are not already familiar with OSPA, it may be good to explain the problem formulation in more detail, and we can use toy example to do so. Suppose that there are two objects present, here referred to as targets, and indicated by the two crosses in the figure, and that our estimator thinks that there are three targets at the locations indicated by the three circles. The objective with our metric is to evaluate how accurate this estimate is, or in other words, measure how close uh, these two sets of vectors are to each other. As you can probably understand, measuring distances between sets is a bit more involved compared to distances between vectors, since sets are not ordered, and the number of elements in the sets may differ. Traditionally, multi-target tracking algorithms have been designed to miss as few targets as possible, while presenting as few false target estimates as possible in areas where there are no targets present. GOSPA has been designed to reflect this performance, and informally, the metric is a sum of a localization error for the detected targets, plus c over 2 times the total number of missed and false targets. The localization error is for pairs of true targets and target estimates that are sufficiently close to each other, whereas the target is considered to be missed if there is no corresponding estimate sufficiently close to it. Similarly, a target estimate is said to be a false target if there is no corresponding true target uh, sufficiently close to it. In our small example here, this means that we have a localization error due to the detected uh, target down here, plus c over 2 times 3, since there are 3 missed and false targets in total. Note that we consider the target here to be missed if the distances to these two estimates are sufficiently large. We will proceed to explain the GOSPA metric and its differences compared to OSPA over the next few slides. But one of the key differences is that we typically want few false and missed targets, and GOSPA specifically measures this, whereas OSPA doesn't. Let us explain how to use GOSPA in more detail, and we do so for alpha equal 2, which is the recommended choice of this parameter. For convenience, we use p equal 1 in this description, even though the main steps are the same also for other values of p. The first step is to find an optimal assignment between the vectors in the two sets, while leaving pairs unassigned if the distance d of x, y between the two vectors is larger than c. Here, d of x, y is some metric for vectors, and it could be, for instance, the L2 metric. In this example, C has been selected such that the only assignment is the pair down here. The other vectors are therefore unassigned. To relate this to our previous description, we say that any unassigned elements are false or missed targets. That is, an unassigned vector uh, in the set of true targets is missed, whereas an unassigned element in the set of target estimates is the false target estimate. Every assigned pair then costs d of x, y, that is, whatever the distance is between the two vectors, whereas all the unassigned elements cost c over 2. Formally, and for a general value of p, we can write this as a minimization over all sets of assignments, gamma, of the following criterion. Here we use x to denote the set of true targets and y to denote the set of target estimates. As you can see, the first term is the total localization cost for all assigned pairs x, i, y, j, whereas the second term is the cost for all unassigned elements. 
This expression may look a bit hairy, but it's not very complicated to understand. In the toy example, uh, the set of assignments gamma only contains one pair. The cardinality of gamma is therefore one. There are two targets present, and the cardinality of x is therefore two. The numbers here are therefore two minus one, which says that there's only one missed target. Expressed in words, we are simply saying that the number of missed targets is the total number of targets minus the number of assigned targets, which makes sense. Similarly, <clears throat> there are three target estimates, which means that the numbers here are three minus one, which tells us that, that there are two false targets. I'll leave it up to you to look at the details regarding the variable P. In order to relate GOSPA to OSPA, it is useful to express GOSPA on a different form. On the previous slide, we had the following expression, where we optimized over the set of assignments. This expression is only valued for alpha equal to. However, it turns out that we can also express the metric as an optimization over permutations. And for the case when the cardinality of y is greater than uh, the cardinality of x, the expression looks like this, where dc is the distance d with a cutoff preventing it from taking values larger than c. This expression enables us to use other values of alpha. That is, the two expressions are equivalent for alpha equal to, but the second expression is a metric for any alpha between zero and two. The second expression also looks quite a bit like OSPA, and for alpha equal one, it is simply an unnormalized version of OSPA, which is what inspired us to call our metric uh, the generalized OSPA. In general, Alpha determines how much a cardinality error should cost, but it's only for alpha equal two that we can decompose the cost into separate components for localized, missed, and false targets. And we argue that this has considerable advantages. If we express GOSPA using the form where we optimize over permutations, it is easy to compare it with OSPA. There are two important differences, where the first is that OSPA is normalized in the sense that it divides the cost by the cardinality of y, assuming that the cardinality of y is larger than the cardinality of x. The second is that the cardinality errors are penalized by c over p in OSPA and c over p divided by alpha in GOSPA. We promote alpha equal two, which enables us to express GOSPA as a sum of the localization error and c over 2 times the number of missed and false targets. We will continue with three examples in order to illustrate why we prefer a metric that is unnormalized and that separates into these three terms. Note that we assume that alpha is equal to 2 from here on. Here's an example that illustrates what happens if you normalize the metric. There are no true targets in these two figures, but different numbers of false targets. According to traditional multi-target tracking literature, we would want the cost to be larger if we have more false targets. Let's now look at what the two metric, uh, metrics tell us. If there is one false target, GOSP by with alpha equal two is C over two, whereas OSPA is C. If there are four false targets, GOSP is four times as large, that is four times C over two, which is two C whereas OSPA is still C. Uh, the reason OSPA still takes the value C, even though the cardinality error is four times as large, is the normalization factor. The normalization factor therefore prevents OSPA from scaling with the number of false targets, which goes against uh, what traditional tracking literature tells us about performance measures. Since GOSPA is unnormalized, it would actually scale nicely with the number of false targets for all values of alpha, but it would yield slightly different values. As I've mentioned previously, traditional tracking literature tells us that the error should increase with the number of false and missed targets. GOSPA with alpha equal to is designed specifically to satisfy this property. In this simple example, we illustrate that OSPA does not always increase with the number of false and missed targets. For simplicity, we assume p equal 1, which we actually did in the previous example as well, even though I forgot to mention it. In the left figure, we have one localized, two missed, and one false target. If d1 is the cost for the localized target, GOSPA becomes d1 
um, plus three times C over two, since there are three false and missed targets in total. OSPA becomes uh, D1 plus two C divided by three. One of these two Cs comes from the cardinality mismatch between the two sets. And the other C comes from a pair of true target and a target estimate that are far apart. Finally, the division by three comes from the normalization. In the right figure, we have one more false target and we would therefore like the error to increase. Gauss has increased to uh, D1 plus two times C since there are now four missed and false targets instead of three. Whereas OSPA still takes the same value as before, which is undesirable. So <clears throat> why does OSPA give this result? The bottom line is that a pair of missed faults to targets, say these two, give a localization error C, whereas a single missed or false target yields a, a cardinality error C. In other words, counterintuitively, a pair of missed faults cost the same as a single missed or false target. With the previous example and this example, we've tried to illustrate why we believe GOSPA is a more reasonable metric than OSPA for multi-target tracking. Another interesting aspect is that GOSPA enables us to analyze the tracking performance in new and interesting ways. Since the cost separates into three terms, localization error, missed targets and false targets, we can actually study how these three components contribute to the total error and compare algorithms with respect to these aspects that are all central to the MTT problem. To illustrate what I mean by this, let us look at some results from a performance evaluation that we published in another paper at Fusion this year. Uh, the paper is written by Yutran Chia and has the title Performance Evaluation of Multiple Nulli Conjugate Priors for Multi-Target Filtering. Uh, the purpose with that paper is to compare several of the multiple Nulli filters that have been recently proposed in the literature. Without going into too much details, uh, the evaluated filters include uh, the Delta GLMB, LMB, PMBM, and PMB filters. In the paper, GOSPA was used both to evaluate the performance of these filters and to analyze the strengths and the weaknesses of the different filters. For instance, in one of the scenarios, we obtained the following results, where the first figure shows the total error, the second shows the localization error, the third shows the error due to missed targets, and the fourth shows the error due to uh, false targets. Clearly, most of the time the error is dominated by the cost for missed targets, in particular for the LMB filter. The point here is that GOSPA enables us to separate the cost into these components, which may give important insights regarding the properties of the different algorithms. Finally, I would like to mention a separate and additional contribution presented in the GOSFA paper. Until now, we've discussed metrics between sets of vectors, but when we evaluate the performance of tracking algorithms, we often view both the ground truth and the estimates as random variables. What we actually want is therefore metrics on stochastic variables, and in our setting, we want metrics on random finite sets. Uh, in the paper, we presented a fairly general result that shows how one can use GOSPA to obtain metrics on random finite sets. In particular, this family includes important examples such as the mean GOSPA and the root mean squared GOSPA. Uh, where the root mean squared GOSPA is closely related to the root mean squared error commonly used for vector vectors. To conclude, uh, we've presented GOSPA, which is a metric between sets of vector, which separates into some of three terms, localization error, missed targets, and false targets. GOSPA penalizes uh, false and missed target estimates, which corresponds to what traditional tracking literature encourages us to do. Those of you who are familiar with OSPA probably know that it can be efficiently computed using the Hungarian algorithm or the auction algorithm. If you have an implementation for evaluating OSPA, it is easy to modify that in order to instead compute GOSPA. We also intend to post a link to our own implementation of GOSPA, and when it is ready, it will be available in the description of this video below. As a final contribution, we have also demonstrated how both OSPA and GOSPA can be used to obtain metrics between random finite sets. Thanks for listening.